Hi, this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter, back with you all over the major platforms like Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, etc. Please do download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. You can hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. Special thanks to Bryant and Stratton College, Stanley Law Offices, Rosie's Corner, and our great, great friend over at State Farm Insurance, and that, of course, is Matt Graham. Get a free rate quote today. Find out about their rate drop as well. You're in the great state of New York, in and around central New York. Go ahead and visit the website, SyracuseInsuranceAgent.com. Get a free rate quote today from Matt Graham and State Farm. Thrilled to bring on to the program the radio play-by-play voice of the NHL's Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, he and I go way back working in central New York on, on radio. He's uh, one of the best in the business a friend of mine, and we're going to talk some NHL playoffs. We're going to talk the future of the Blue Jackets and some uh, things from Bobby's career and stroll down memory lane a little bit as well. Bob McGelligot at Bobby Max Sports. Bobby, thanks for coming on, man. How are you? I'm doing well, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, just initial reaction, John Davidson back with Columbus, uh, reunited here. Um, what does it all mean? What did you think uh, when you first heard the news? Well, when I first heard it, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I think it it, it certainly makes complete sense, both uh, from the Blue Jackets' standpoint and for John's standpoint. Uh, you know, what happened there in New York was a surprise to everybody, mm-hmm. I think, in the hockey world. And, um, you know, it was a surprise to him, too. And this allows him to, to come back here and kind of finish what he started. And I think that this franchise has missed him in the two years that he wasn't here. And that's not a knock on anybody that was – uh, doing any of his duties while he was gone. It's just, uh, you know, I think this team right now, especially with John Tortorella leaving, uh, this team was in need of a face once again. John Davidson uh, provides that, and he's a guy that is very familiar with this market, obviously wanted to come back here and wanted to try to uh, finish off what he and Yarmo Kekalainen started a number of years ago. So um, it, it kind of it, it fits the bill, I think, for everybody. But I was surprised. I was surprised how quickly it came about. Um, but I think it's good. I think it's good for everybody involved. I think that's well said. I was stunned too. The New York thing was crazy to me because it really seems like, I know they kind of went into a tailspin at the end of the year, but I mean, you look at these picks, I mean, Lafreniere, you look at Kako, you look at, you look at all these guys, you know, I, I, I thought he did a pretty good job there. And I mean, they're going in a different direction with Chris Drury, but I don't know if I can figure out which one surprised me more him getting canned from the Rangers or, or going back to Columbus. I, I guess I might have to choose the Rangers, but I, I thought he had them going in the right direction in New York, Bobby. Yeah, I do too. And I, I that is the one that is more surprising. Uh, like I said, when, when I found out he was coming back and I like literally got a call the day before that said, uh, clear some time in the afternoon tomorrow, <laughs> we're going to need you for something. Okay. Um, you know, I, but yeah, the leaving the Rangers was the biggest surprise. I mean, there was so much hoopla, just two years previous when he left the Blue Jackets and went to the Rangers. And yeah, like you said, they were going in the right direction. I mean, even at uh, one point this year, they very well could have made the playoffs in that division. So um, yeah, it it was a shock and yeah, they're going in a different direction with Chris Drury, as you said, and uh, obviously Mr. Dolan thinks that they need to be a little uh, tougher and have a little bit more grit uh, than, than they have. Is he right or is he wrong? We'll find out. But at the bottom, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, he's the owner, so he can do whatever he wants to. And uh, so maybe it's a good thing for John Davidson that again comes back here, where uh, the people here love him, uh, the management, the ownership here loves him, uh, and this franchise very much is in need of a John Davidson right now. I think. What, what does the roster look like going in? What, what do they need in Columbus? I know that there were some moves made this year. Uh, Luke Dubois right on the move for Liney. Uh, that was one move there, but but uh, I mean, how how much do they have to do to be a kind of like a regular playoff staple? You even get into the middle or upper echelon of, of the league here, Bobby. What's missing? Centerman, big time. You mentioned Pierre Luc Dubois, uh, basically, you know, forcing his way out of this organization, and still unsure why he was forcing his way out of this organization. A lot of people think it was John Tortorella. He says it wasn't John Tortorella, but never really came clean and said uh, what the reasoning was. But, 
as soon as he left, it just exposed everything. And Mike, this team, even though it made the playoffs four years in a row, the center position has always been the position of weakness here. And with Pierre-Luc Dubois, they finally had a guy that they drafted and they developed and was a number one centerman, a true number one centerman. And then they uh, traded Josh Anderson to Montreal and they got Max Domi. And the thought was he was going to be the, uh, the guy that would fill in there in the number two spot. And, uh, then they got Miko Koivu. They signed as a free agent from Minnesota and he would have been the third line centerman. And then Riley Nash, who was a good defensive guy, was going to be the fourth line going into training camp. It looked like they finally figured out that position. Within three weeks, Miko Koivu decided to retire. Max Domi wasn't playing well enough defensively to stay at the center position, and Pierre-Luc Dubois was traded to Winnipeg. So it was all blown up. So that still remains the number one position that needs to be addressed. But there's so many things with this franchise right now, uh, and nothing, well, besides needing a coach, there's nothing more important than finding out whether or not Seth Jones intends to sign another contract when his deal is up after this upcoming season or if he might be looking to move on as an unrestricted free agent, because as it is right now, uh, if he's not going to be committed or uh, if, if he's going to want to go somewhere else and try to get with a team that he thinks can be a a winner more quickly than what happens here, then you got to make some big decisions like probably moving Seth Jones and getting assets and players back. And that, that would start a whole different process. People around the country, they hear Columbus, Ohio, and they immediately go to Buckeyes, right? They go right to the Ohio State stuff. But people don't realize this. I, I had a, a long-time uh, grade school friend of mine, lived in Columbus for a long time, and, and, and some others. I haven't seen a game in Columbus. I'd love to. But people rave about the hockey atmosphere, you know, and, and, and those fans do love the Blue Jackets, Bobby, right? So can you get into a little bit of what – when it's at its best, when when you've seen it at its best, how passionate, how crazy, how awesome the home venue is in Columbus. Well, it's really, really good. And we've seen that in the playoffs. You know, this team went for a long time without getting into the playoffs and then they were in and then they were back out. And then within this, you know, these last five years when they started to go every year and then people started to expect it, uh, look forward to it, you know, it's changed the whole mindset of the fan, I, you know, something that what you said, Mike, is right. I mean, when you think of Columbus, you think of the Ohio State Buckeyes football team. And I'll say football team because they do play other sports over there. Nobody cares about the other sports they play over there. It's only the football team. But that football team normally goes 12-0 and every year. And, you know, there, there are still people out there that if you lose a game, they're like, well, what do you mean, you lost? Well, yeah. We're not playing Youngstown State here, okay? You're playing the Montreal Canadiens and the New York Rangers and, uh, you know, the, the best of the best in the world. So, you know, you've kind of overcome that mindset with the winning in the last four years. But make no mistake, the same passion that the people in this area have for college football, you know, they do have it for hockey. And, and once you're winning, you win those people over, people that may not have gone to a game, people that may not have watched a game people that may not have paid attention to where the team is in the standings, all of a sudden you're winning. And now because you know, you're used to winning in this town, uh, they start to pay attention. I think that's been a, it's a really good thing, but the energy in the building, when, when things are cranking here, especially during the playoffs, it, you can compare it to anywhere in the league. And, uh, and it's right there. I put it right up with anybody and, and the players notice that coaches notice that, but here's the thing. When you're competing for free agents, and, uh, you know, this league is going in a direction. It's similar to the NBA. It's not ever going to be the NBA. You're not going to be able to bring in two guys and change the entire makeup of your team like they do in the NBA. But it's starting to go in the direction of, you know, players. Maybe there's a certain city they want to play with. Maybe there is a certain teammate that they would like to have. They're starting to make those decisions. And, you know, Columbus isn't as attractive as uh, playing in a, uh, in a city that's on the coast and has a beach and it's not as attractive as playing in New York City or in Chicago or, you know, or in one of the Canadian cities that's an original six. So there are, uh, there are things you have to overcome here. But as you do in many facets, facets of life, the way you overcome them is by putting together a good group and winning games. Because when you're a winner, people want to be a part of that. Do, do you think the league as a whole will look at coronavirus 2020, 2021, these last several months with 
the bubble and the divisions that were made up geographically uh, a, a lot more, you know, it was just a lot more easy to play. I, I love the divisions, actually. I, I got to really love them after a few weeks because I just thought the, the chippiness and the competition and it was almost like the playoffs during the regular season after a while because they were so sick of each other and then they have to play each other again. Um, but all the stuff that happened with the coronavirus from a schedule standpoint, division standpoint, uh, bubble standpoint, if you need that, anything else in between, is there anything you see, Bobby Mack, that the NHL would say, hey, we had a chance to explore because of the coronavirus situation. We're going to keep this because it worked. I think the two-game series have a chance to stay. Okay. Now, I don't know. I don't know how that will work specifically. I don't know if that would just be out of division. Uh, there's also that other situation where you play everybody in the league every year, but you play uh, the teams outside of your conference uh, with a home and home. So they come to your place once you go to their place once. Now, when I came into this league a number of years ago, you didn't play everybody in your building uh, every year. You played every team, but you were alternating with the teams outside of your conference. They were coming in. Uh, you know, they somebody would come to Columbus one year. The next year you would go to their place. I wonder if that's something that might happen. Let's say you're going to play the Los Angeles Kings two times a year. Well, this year, the two times will be in Columbus. Next year, the two times will be in Los Angeles. I, I don't know, but I, I think that I think that everybody liked the two game series because the, the one thing about hockey is, Mike, and, and I've done a lot of baseball. And I've done a lot of hockey. You know, in baseball, when you go into a town, you know, you're going to be there for three days. So you can kind of settle in, unwind, relax a little bit. In hockey, I mean, we'll play at home on a Friday night, jump on a plane, fly to Washington, play a game Saturday, fly back home, leave again on Monday, fly to Carolina, play a game on Tuesday, get back on the plane, come home after the game. I mean, it, it's a rat race. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I think the players enjoyed having that downtime. We don't have to leave after this game. We can go back to the hotel. We can have a meal. We can, uh, you know, just settle in for a couple of days. That's something that I think got a lot of favorable marks. I, you know, the division thing, I think the division thing hurt the Blue Jackets this year. I really do. Because going back into that central division, to the, the honest is, look, and, and this team was not very good this year, so I'm not saying they would have made the playoffs somewhere else. But playing against Detroit and Dallas and Nashville and the Florida teams does not have the same juice as playing the Penguins, who are the biggest rival here. Uh, playing against the Rangers, the Islanders, the Flyers, even going into those buildings. I mean, you know, going to Madison Square Garden or going to Amelie Arena in Tampa, and I know Tampa's a defending champs. I'm just saying, if you're going to go into an atmosphere and play, it's special to go into Madison Square Garden. It's special to go into Philly and take on whatever Philly team it is because of the history that is there. And, um, you know, the, the chippiness that you've come up with uh, against those teams throughout the last couple of years to go to Washington and play a team that you had a 2-0 lead against in the playoffs and then lost four straight a couple of years ago. You know, the, there is that – There is. I think they missed that. I, I think they missed having um, those cities be a part of what they were doing. So I wasn't a huge fan of the divisions. Uh, the Canadian division, I was just reading something where, you know, they're just speculating maybe that division stays intact for next year. Let's be honest. Yeah, they want that division intact because a Canadian team's guaranteed to make it to the Final Four. <laughs> and I, I don't think that's guaranteed unless they have that division. So, of course, the people in Canada are going to want that. Um, so, anyway, I think there were – and as far as the bubble, if we ever have to do that again – well, I don't even want to do a road game off a TV monitor again and not be able to travel. It's just – it's brutal. It's awful. It had to be done. Um, but I, I sure as hell hope we're beyond all of that stuff because it's just – it's just not the same. You know, we – we can't do our jobs the same. We can't get around the players. We can't get the stories. Um, the players are secluded in a bubble. I'm telling you, if I ran into a player somewhere, it was like they would stop and talk to you. And maybe it's guys that didn't even want to give you the time of day before because they're sick and tired of talking to each other. They don't get to talk to anybody. They don't get to see anybody. Everybody's tired. Of so uh, that's that's the one thing that. We better not be going back into that part of it. But I do think there are elements of what happened here this past year that uh, that will stick within the game. Radio play-by-play -play voice of the Blue Jackets in the NHL. It's our good buddy Bob McGilligan at Bobby Mac Sports. Um, do, do you think that the NHL is at a spot where they need, for whatever reason, 
their top names in, in the playoffs deep. In other words, Mike Trout for baseball never really makes it. Uh, Connor McDavid so far hasn't made it. He's probably the best player, but you have Crosby, you have Ovechkin. Uh, you know, the, the, these guys are, are not in the postseason right now. Um, do you, do you see a situation in McDavid not being there as well? Uh, does that hurt the league or is there enough elsewhere? I think it hurts the league. I, I don't, you, you always want to have your best players on the biggest stage. Um, you know, hockey is a team sport and that's, you know, something that they, they downplay the individual in this league. But yet the people that you just talked about are talked about for a reason because their talent is above and beyond. So you can look at it two ways. You can say, uh, you know, it's great to have these great players, but this is the ultimate team game. If you don't have the right team, even with the best players, you're not going to make it. And I think that is special and I think that's worthy, but I'll say this. Do you think ESPN and TNT, who just picked up the TV package for the next number of years, do you think they will be happy doing playoff games without Connor McDavid, without Sidney Crosby, without Alex Ovechkin, without the top players in the game? I, I think that's where the, you know, those people have the bigger problems. And when you're trying to draw casual fans to the sport, it's, um, it's always better to have your most talented players there, right? And I, again, I think this going back to ESPN is huge. And I think NBC did a great job with this sport the last number of years, but it's not ESPN. You're not, look, now you're going to be on Sports Center. Now you're going to be featured more prominently on Sports Center. You're not going to be buried at the end of the, the cast, you know? So, um, you know, that's where. That's where I think it's even going to be more important. You want to showcase your stars. You want to try to bring more people into it. You want to, you want more people to be excited about it. And those guys have, they've got more talent than some of the other guys. The other guys work hard and all that. And that's great. And, uh, and I, I really appreciate that. But from that standpoint, I think that's where you get hurt, not having your biggest stars on the biggest stage at this time of the year. So you've seen, obviously, all the teams recently in, in non-corona situations uh, with a normal schedule and obviously the, the, the way it is now. And so I know that you have a close eye to the postseason. Give me, give me your uh, immediate takeaways here of, of what you've seen. I can't get enough of the Stanley Cup playoffs every year. I think it's, I think it's by far the best playoff out there. Um, I think Colorado is unbelievable right now as we record this. Vegas, if they can get a win and face Colorado, I think that could be the marquee series. Tampa trying to repeat. Uh, you've got the Winnipeg story. Boston looks incredible. The Islanders are that lunch bucket group that just goes out and beats the tar out of every night. Take me around here a little bit, what you've seen, what you've been impressed with in the Stanley Cup playoffs so far this year, Bob. Well, let's start with uh, you were talking about a potential Vegas-Colorado matchup. And I, I think this kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with what you were talking about with the biggest stars not being in the playoffs. You're going to have arguably the two best teams playing each other now before it even counts for the Stanley cup final, mm -hmm. which kind of stinks, uh, you know, that they're going to get each other in the second round I agree. of the playoffs. They're not even going to get to the third round to the semifinals. They're going to be in the second round. So, you know, that I, I understand when they're putting together this stuff, you know, the, there are travel concerns that they keep in mind and all this, but um, doggone, it would sure be nice if there was a, a better way to separate the seeds so that you could get, as long as they win and they get there, you're going to get the, uh, the higher seeds together later in the playoff rounds. But anyway, um, you know, I think that Colorado is, I, I really like Colorado and I've liked Colorado and they've got great talent. Uh, Jared Bednar, who's the head coach there. He came out of the blue jacket system. He was coaching in the American hockey league. He is a, uh, he's a great man. He's a great coach. He's got that team clicking right now. Uh, I like them coming out of there. Uh, as far as, you know, the central division that I watched obviously all year, I, I know these teams better than any of the other ones because we saw them all year. Uh, you know, first of all, I was, I thought Carolina would take care of Nashville easily, Me much too. more easily than it turned out to be. Mm -hmm. And as that series went on, even in the elimination game, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I hope Nashville just wins this game. I hope they force a game seven. I hope, you know, and, and I do think if Nashville would have, even had they got through that series, I wouldn't have expected them to put up much of a fight in the next round. But I didn't expect them to put up much of a fight in the first round, so what do I know? 
but Carolina is a really good team. They're, uh, you know, Rod Brindamore is obviously a coach that they play for. Uh, they've got good young talent. Uh, they play as a team the whole nine yards. I think they're they're going to be formidable. But at Tampa, you know, people were saying during the regular season, you know, they had the long season last year and this and that. Look, they are still the top team in this division, if you ask me. They got Kucherov back. A lot of people are pissed at the way they kept him off the roster all year so he didn't count against the camp, and now they bring him into the playoffs. He's lighting it up. But you know what? They played by the rules, the way the rules are written. He's an excellent player, and I think whoever faces Tampa is going to have a hard time with Tampa. Are they going to repeat the whole thing? I don't know about that, but I I expect that they're going to get out of this next round. I I think they'll get by Carolina. It might be a fight, but I think think they'll do that. You mentioned the Islanders. The Islanders, it's got to be just – I'll tell you, it's frustrating to call games against the Islanders, let alone what it must be like to play against the Islanders. Barry Trotz, defense first, and he's got that – you know, they got enough offense where they'll get you. They'll get you offensively. Mm-hmm. Look at the way they eliminated Pittsburgh. They Bailey and, and Nelson are really goals. good, Bobby. They are really good. They, they're they very good. Josh Bailey's been there for a long, long time. Yeah. I don't know if uh, many people that aren't Islanders fans realize how long Josh Bailey has been there. Um, I remember when I got to the league in 2009, and there was a Josh Bailey and Nikita Filatov thing there going on mm-hmm. with the, the Islanders. You know, Philotoff went to Columbus, Bailey went to the Islanders, and I had people, media people would ask me in my first year here, you know, what's Philotoff doing? It was almost like the, you know, oh, did we get the right guy? Well, obviously, Philotoff hasn't been in this league for a long, long time. Josh Bailey's clicking right now. So, uh, yeah, they, they've got the punch where they need it, and Barry Trotz gets his teams to play his system. And when they play it and they start to win and then they say, okay, this works. So uh, that's going to be an interesting one though. I mean, Boston's really good, but the Islanders have a way to suck the life out of you. Just ask the Penguins. I, I was surprised with the way the Penguins finished the regular season. Like at one point I thought they might not make the playoffs. And then when they won that division, I thought they might have a chance to go all the way to the Stanley Cup final. And then you see what the Islanders did to them. Just, and I, but I think it's a bad matchup for the Penguins. The Islanders have had their number the last couple of years, but but, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be uh, hard to beat. Don't be surprised if they find a way to shut down. You know, Taylor Hall's played so well since he's got the Boston there. But the Islanders, that's a that's a completely different beast. And then the North Division, I hate. I just I think it's the weakest division in hockey. I think I you probably figured that when I talked about the Canadian team getting the Final Four earlier here. Um, you know, the fact that Toronto had a chance to knock off Montreal and then blew that opportunity – uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I still think Toronto wins the series, and then they're going to crow about the fact that it's the first time in 12, 17 years, whatever it's been, that they've won a series. And then they got to play Winnipeg. And if Winnipeg doesn't knock them off, I'm going to be surprised. And I still think, I still think, and maybe the Jets could prove me wrong on this, but I still think whoever comes out of that division, as soon as they have to take on a team from the United States, is going to be in trouble because I think they've played the weakest division all year long. I think everybody else has battled more than they have, and I think that's going to benefit whatever team gets them in the semifinal. My my dream final is is either Colorado. Uh, it's been Vegas and Tampa for the longest time, but I would even take a Colorado Tampa final. I just think those those teams are just locomotives going up against each other. Bobby, do you do you have a dream final? Uh, no, it's funny, Mike. Once you're once you're here, you don't your care, right? Yeah. It, you're like, yeah. I don't, you know, I watch it because it's fun to watch, and I like I don't park myself in front of the TV at six thirty or seven o'clock at night. I can't wait for the games to come on, but, um, you know, I sit here and I turn them on and I watch them. And once I turn it on, then I'm into it. I'm not going to flip away and watch something else. Um, so I don't know. I, I really, again, selfishly, I would like to see Colorado get there because of Jared Bednar and Chris McFarland, who used to be the assistant general manager for the blue jackets and uh, was in charge of the Syracuse crunch. You know, Chris is an assistant GM for Joe Sackick out yeah, there. And, that's right. you know, I root for those guys. I know those guys. I root for those guys. I, so I'd love to see them get into the final. And like I told you before, yeah, if Tampa gets there, I'm not going to be shocked by that in any way, shape or form. They are the, two years ago when they lost to the blue jackets and they got swept after having one of the greatest regular seasons of all time. They learned so many lessons from that. And to their credit, they acted upon it. They changed their roster last year when they got Barclay Goudreau from San Jose and Blake Coleman from the New Jersey Devils. They got a little bit more grit that helped them to win a Stanley Cup. They are now a seasoned team in the playoffs. 
That's why even when they get on the ropes, they don't get rattled now. They did two years ago. They got so rattled that they, they blew it, and they, they took history. They helped the Blue Jackets make history is what they did. But they're not like that anymore, so they're going to be a tough team to beat. I agree. I think getting that grit was important in there. Patty Maroon, you know, picking him up too was was a big deal. So uh, th- th- this is, a, yeah, the Lightning are here for, for quite a while. I, w- I want to close with this, Bobby, kind of going back into, you know, down memory lane a little bit with you. Um, your fondest memories and, and some things, they ever do they ever come up in, in, in thoughts as you're traveling or doing games, you know, way, way, way back when, almost what, I guess a couple decades ago here almost, uh, you know, with your days calling, you know, Chiefs baseball and crunch hockey and all that in central New York, you, I, I know you have a lot of memories from, from those, uh, from those experiences. Do they, do they come up ever for you? Come up all the time. Mike. Yeah. I cool. tell people all the time, you know, you, when, especially when you spend a lot of time in the minor leagues of whatever sport you're working in, you spend that time thinking about getting the opportunity to get to the top of the profession. Getting the call. It works the same way yeah. in broadcasting, getting the call. Yeah. That's right. And you get the call and you get here and you work here. And I will honestly tell you that I tell more minor league stories to this day. I've been in this league 12 years. I tell more minor league stories to this day than I do NHL stories. Yeah, I got NHL stories. But it's when you're paying your dues and you're around people like before the players, before they become stars, the coaches, before they become big time coaches. uh, It's it's just different and it's real. And you're growing up together and you're learning how to be a pro I, no matter what job that you have you're learning how to be a pro so yeah I, I think about it all the time i just thought about it when when tampa eliminated florida and i'm watching the post-game handshake and i see Derek mckenzie walking there Derek mckenzie is an <laughs> assistant coach on the bench with the florida panthers yeah. under joe quinville yeah. right yeah. and Derek mckenzie was a guy i spent a lot of time with in syracuse no and columbus yeah. um yeah and you think about all those stories, you know, with, I see Derek and I think about how when Zenon Kanopka was the captain oh, with the crunch and yeah. Derek didn't really like the way that he was motivating the team, but it was working. So Derek couldn't say a word about it. <laughs> and, you know, they just, they let it go and they won 15 games in a row and they, they wound up in the playoffs. So yeah, it comes up a lot. As a matter of fact, just this week, uh, now that you asked me about that, you bring up the chiefs. Um, I get on Monday, I get a text from Al LaBeouf, who was a hitting coach with the Chiefs uh, with me for a couple of years. And and I haven't – I've talked to him through the years. Like, uh, he, he's with Milwaukee now in their system. And, and a couple of years ago, he came out to a Blue Jackets-Coyotes game in Arizona during spring training for them. So it's not that I haven't talked to him in all that time, but I haven't talked to him in a while. And I get a text the other day saying, hey, we're coming into Columbus. Do you want to play any golf? And I had no idea he was working with the Nashville AAA team. And uh, he was going to come in, and ironically, I'm going to do some games for the Clippers. So we're, we're going to be there at the same time. So it comes up all the time, Mike. It is never forgotten. Uh, the lessons are never forgotten. The people are never forgotten. And uh, it's really a part of what you are. And there's so many people like me that came up that way, and we tell those stories uh, all the time about how much we learned, how great the experience was, how great the people that we met along the way were, and you're included in that. I mean, this is this is why I'm talking to you because we met during those times, and and you do a great job with what you do, and um, you know that's really what it's all about. So those stories, they're not in the background; they're still in the forefront. So cool, radio play-by-play voice of the Columbus Blue Jackets, Bobby Max Sports on Twitter. Go give him a follow, Bob Miguel. Bob, thanks so much. This means a lot that you came on and uh, continued success, and hopefully down the line I can run into you here. God, I haven't seen you in forever. All right, well, you got to come to Columbus. We can, I, I'll tell you what. They open it back up, get out here, and we'll get you to a game. Pick your opponent, and we'll get you to a game. All right, anybody but the Sabres, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's guaranteed win night for Columbus when the Sabres yeah. come to town. Yeah, good one. All right, thanks so much, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. The ML Sports Platter brought to you by our great friends at the Al in Angus Pub, home of the best star in Angus Burger in town. If you're in and around central New York, make sure you stop by and try the New York State Burger of the Year in 2021, the Allen Angus Hot and Smoky Candied Bacon Burger. Unbelievable stuff. They're going head-to-head with the state of Iowa right now. They've also got wraps, dinner entrees, and a heck of a lot more. Their French onion soup is to die for as well. Homemade right there 
on site at the Allen Angus Pub, a family-friendly pub, a great place to dine or just have a drink with friends before or after any downtown event. AllenAngusPub.com. Things are opening back up. More hours are going to be available to go eat burgers and drink some beers with your pals. So get on over to the Al and Angus Pub, home of the best darn Angus Burger in town. We're also sponsored by Prestwick Golf, Welch & Company Jewelers, our good friends at the Vince Aguera Consulting Group, and Bryant and Stratton College. Log on to bryantstratton.edu and check out their two- and four-year degrees starting very soon. Big time thanks again to Bob McGelligot, one of the best in the business. Go back about 20 years with Bobby when I interned for Sports Radio 620 WHEN back when it was a thing and uh, just watch Bobby's rise. You know, he was with the Syracuse Chiefs calling games, Syracuse Crunch calling games, and every single time I listened to him, every single time I worked with him, every day I was around him, uh, learned so much from him, but knew that he was going to be a superstar someday. Uh, he was a superstar then to me, and he's even more uh, uh, of that right now. So uh, thanks to Bob McGilligan for coming on the ML Sports Platter, which you can get all over the major platforms, Spotify, Google, on and on and on. Just find that purple podcast button, for example, on your Apple phone, Tap it, hit search, type in ML Sports Platter, hit subscribe, and you'll get new and archived episodes delivered right to your uh, cell phone, right into the audio section there of your Apple podcast with the likes of Bob Casas, Adrian Wojnarowski, a potpourri of Hall of Famers from all sports as well, the ML Sports Platter on Stitcher, Deezer, and CastBox, and everywhere else as well, where you get podcasts on your smartphone device. I'm on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. Give me a follow. Hit me up with direct messages at ML Sports Platter on Instagram as well if you have show topic ideas or anything you want to chat about in the world of sports. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.